I have actually found a new love for Kuratake Gansai Tombi watercolors. So that's really cool. Um, it's really nice to actually kind of be forced to re-examine some of my biases that I had and to, you know, re-approach a product. So that's really nice. I've actually found a new appreciation that I would not have had otherwise. So I'm grateful for that. Hey, arty friends. Today we begin our second art snacks demonstration slash field test piece. This is the Western style illustration. So I'm gonna handle it the way I would typically handle a uh, watercolor, um, or at least something very close to that. And it's just a cute sketch of Kara in some share mocks. And this was sketched in with a pink colored lead. So that's going to add to the piece, I believe. So I'm really excited to go ahead and get started. All right, my friends, for this field test, I do want to walk you guys through a couple of different things. I am augmenting what was sent to me with some additional brushes, and I've also replaced the, the brush 2.0 they sent me. It's already been assimilated into my travel watercolor gear. I'm going to be using a similar brush, water brush though, that performs very similarly to the brush 2.0. I just wanted to point this out. I may dig it up and use it in the, in the middle of this piece, but I did want to give disclosure that I've replaced it with a similar performing but different water brush just because it is very much packed away. I use the arches paper. This is the same paper. It's just been trimmed down to size and I am going to mount it to something for a little more structural stability. This is nice paper, but it does have a tendency to buckle when you add a lot of water. I am also going to be using a palette, which I'm gonna go grab in a minute, and a cup of water. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to apply a background wash, and I hope this is the blue I want. Although I could go with the really, hmm. Actually, you know what? Let us find a scrap piece of paper and swatch it and decide which one we really want. So the problem is I actually really like both of them. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna start with the lighter blue and I'm using a squirrel hair mop. And the reason I'm doing that is you can get a lot more control with a squirrel hair mop than you can with a water brush. Water brushes are really good for loose sort of gestural things. And you guys saw me do it in the edigame demonstration I did for you guys. But I want a little more control for a Western style watercolor. So I'm gonna start at the bottom. And this is a nice opaque kind of blue. You don't wanna over paint it too much because it's gonna turn muddy. But you can use it to paint over things. This is a very, 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 very soft squirrel hairbrush. It's a little mushy. So it's really good as like a smaller version of a mop, but it's not good if you have tight details or you wanna do, I mean, I guess it depends on the type of brush work you wanna do, it can be a good one. But this didn't come in the box anyway, so I don't know why I'm telling you guys about it. Y'all don't need to hear all this. I wanna make sure I keep this area up here still wet so I can get some blending in there. It's always the hardship for me when I do these pieces that have like a nice large area of wash, but I have all these tiny details to paint first, is that usually my wash will dry unevenly. And yes, I could use masking frisket to help with this. So as I've told you guys in many, 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 many of my other videos, the sky is like an inverted bowl. So we want to go from dark at the top to light at the bottom, at least 
when the sun's out and the fun's out and the gun's out. Okay, I'm going to start painting up into the sky a little bit because I do want it to have a bit of a blend. And another nice thing about a natural hairbrush like this is that it will hold a lot of paint and a lot of water. The back of the watercolor snacks card talks about what you should look for in a good brush. And really, that really, really depends on what kind of art you do. So I'm going to start, oh yes, I like that. I'm going to start here along where the lighter blue is. Work my way up. And I'm going to let that dry. And I'm actually going to prop it up a little bit. I have here a box of staples that'll make a nice little lift. All right, there we go. All right, this is a little bit dry, which is good. It's not fully dry. I'm going to go in. and just do a little bit of very dark blue at the top and then I'm going to blend it out a little bit with some clean water. It's always hard to work around objects like that. And I'm going to make sure I get a lot of the excess water out of this brush since it tends to be a very thirsty brush. Then I might even use There we go. All right. Let that dry as well. Now I have a tendency, as you guys know, to overwork just about everything. So while I have a really strong desire to continue working on the sky, I'm going to resist that desire. I'm going to opt to not do that. <laughs> trying to start new habits. So for the sake of thoroughness, I'm going to use the water brush and I'm going to, let's see, the sky is still drying. So I don't want to get started yet on the shamrocks. So I think what I will do you know, I was so smart and I had a SWAT sheet and then I said, my room is a mess and I want to clean it up. So I put it away like a genius. So I'm going to have to kind of re-swatch things to figure it out. But I'm going to grab a little bit of indigo and I'm going to try and do some shading on her teeth and then the shading on the top half of her eye. And then a little bit of shading in the clover flowers, clover blossoms. And I always have a problem with water brushes, almost regardless of which brand I use, of either being too dry or way too wet and constantly dumping water. Soften that a little bit. Lift some of that up. And then give that a chance to dry as well. Oh, the sky is getting there, almost there. Now, while that is drying, that's going to be too dark. While that is drying, I'm going to use indigo to create the shadow on the white of her dress, but I've got it way too dark here. So I'm going to Lift it up a bit with a piece of paper towel and 
and do the same over here. And I think I'm gonna try harder to dig up that brush 2O they sent since this is a little bit leak leaky. It's a Jane Davenport water brush. It behaves very similarly to the water brush that Sketchbox sent out as their signature. It works fine as a water brush. I'm just not, I'm also just like not a big water brush user except for very loose sketches. But I did, since this is one of the field test videos, I did want to make sure I demonstrate that. I just always have a lot of difficulty using it. I'm probably just not an effective user of water brushes. Down here, that's an area I'm gonna wanna correct. Let's see if I can lift some of this. Some of this is so dark. And looking at how dark the dress ended up being, even though it's supposed to be white. I am going to have to do some corrections on that, but it also makes me want to kind of darken the background. I'm going to try to resist that urge for now and let this dry and see what we're dealing with. So I am still kind of bothered by how similar the uh, tone is, I guess, between the background and the foreground, but I'm going to let it go. I know you guys should be so proud of me. I'm going to let it go. And I'm going to go clean out my cup of water. It's pretty milky from this light sky blue. Looks like Biakuga blue. Um, and yes, I'm quite pleased with myself for knowing that. Um, but next, I'm going to mix up her skin tone. All right, so rather than filling a big well. What's nice about this palette that I'm using that you guys can't see. Picked it up at Jerry's Artorama and it's a nice large weld palette. But what it's cool about this is you can actually use these as mixing spaces for several colors while keeping color segregated. So I actually really like this palette for individual illustrations. This is that nice kind of coral red color. So that's going to be a little bit of a softer, hopefully, red. I know, I'm still thinking about that background, y'all. I'm sorry. Because, like, if I'm going to redo it, now is the only real time I can kind of do anything about it. And I do plan on doing kind of a light inking over this just to kind of tighten up some of the details. I may skip that and just ink in watercolor, which is a technique I really love the look of and I've showed you guys how I do that as well. So I do know I will gain some contrast as the piece progresses as we, as we continue to work on it, but if I want a darker background I think now is kind of the only opportunity I'm really going to have to get it. I needed to go down in here anyway and fix that so that it better matches the line of the skirt. I could almost leave it like that but I am going to go into the sky a little bit more. I want to do wet into wet. Sometimes it's worth going back and fixing and sometimes it's just not. I want to get it while it's still wet so we can get some nice wet into wet blending. I'm starting to add a lot of water to the page so I am starting to get it wants to kind of start curling on me. It is also a very wet day outside today. It's raining. Bring that dark blue a little bit more down into the light blue. 
right. I think that's going to work a little bit better. Then I'm going to use a thirsty brush. Clean that up a little bit. But I think that's going to be better, a better fit. Then once this dries, I'll start painting the skin tone. All right, nice and dry. So it's time to start working on her skin tone. And I'm going to save the Escoda brush they sent for details because it's a little bit small to be doing fills like this. It's like the number one or one of the number one contributors to your work looks muddy, scratchy, and patchy is that you're covering an area with a too small brush. However, I am using an Art Snacks scent brush. This is from their Inktober collection in 2005 or 2015. 15 or 16, I think it's 16. It is the Princeton Kalinsky Scable, Scable, Sable brush. I don't like it as an inking brush, but I do like it a lot as a watercolor brush. All right, let that dry. I ended up mixing that a little bit darker than I had wanted. Rather than try to lift it, I guess I could try to lift it. So I guess I will kind of work around here. And it's not that it's too, too dark. It's just that I want this to be kind of a light, summery sort of illustration. All right, not too much lifting here. So I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna do another layer on the skin. All right, let's go ahead and get that second layer down. Another plus side to working with a palette I showed you guys is that colors evaporate more quickly. So if you're trying to do something that kind of depends on layering and contrast, you can probably achieve what you're looking for a little faster on that palette. And give that a chance to dry as well. So there's a green color in this set that I think is just beautiful. Let me see if I can find it. It's like a warbler green. And it's really, I think, very unique. I'm gonna mix it a little bit with a turquoise so I can get a lighter shade of the color. So you guys can see, it's a really beautiful color. I'm gonna let that dry. gonna grab a little bit more red try to drag some of the pink off to the side I think that'll work well for my blush color as well so what I'm gonna do I'll go ahead and finish doing kind of the shading I was doing with it let that dry and then go back and do the blush with it as well. But on the Arches paper, these handle a lot better than I remember them handling. Um, last time I used them, I used them on, um, it was a cellulose pa paper of some sort for this sort of an illustration. I was really unhappy with it because I was having a lot of problems with lifting, but it seems like the Arches does a really good job of holding on to the pigments. I've also been kind of avoiding blends just because I do want sort of a nice, strong, sunny kind of lighting, which would give us some nice cast shadows. Now with the blush color, I will blend it out a little bit more. Oh, that looks so cute. Maybe I'll just leave it as is. She looks so happy. Okay, so I do want to mix a little bit of shadow color, but I don't want to do too much of it. Probably just where the hair overlaps 
and just where her face overlaps her neck, those kind of areas, since I don't want to lose the sunny brightness. Now, one of the purples included in this set is already really good for that, but I want something a little more red as well. Try to pull out so you guys can see what I'm mixing. And I don't want it to get too dark, so I want it to be more red than purple. And this arches is pretty delightful to paint on. All right, let that dry as well. All right, I think that's a nice color. I'm gonna leave that as is. And I think it's really gonna come together once uh, I've added the rest of the color in the piece. I'm gonna add a little more of the blush color on the cheeks and the lips and right under the nose. Oh, on the elbow as well. I've noticed too, when I do these sort of lineless watercolor pieces, I often feel like it looks really sloppy. And that doesn't mean it does, it just, I feel like it does until I get to like the correction stage where everything really starts to come together. And then I'm like, oh, it looks so much better than I thought. So, the next thing I think I wanna do, I'm kind of saving the shamrocks for last because sometimes green like red can be a little bleedy. I think I'm gonna use a little bit of indigo and a smaller brush. I gotta find it again. And just kinda hit some of the low lights there. All right. Oh, no, I'm grabbing the turquoise, which is beautiful, but not the color I wanted. I wanted the beautiful dark warbler green. It's another thing. If you like doing Western style watercolor and you don't necessarily like mixing your own colors or you want a lot of your colors kind of readily available to you for whatever reason, um, the larger Gansai Tombi sets have so many beautiful colors just ready, even metallics. I reviewed uh, the Mozart Komorebi set, which is not Gansai Tombi, but it's very similar and they market it as Japanese style watercolor, so I can only assume they're talking about Gansai style watercolor. And that set is really quite affordable. And uh, it's got like 40 different colors in it. And that could be a really good option for Western style watercolorists. Not that this isn't, but I mean, there, there you do get larger pans. So if you paint larger than this, or if you want your paint to last a little longer, that's definitely a good direction. So while that dries, I do want to add a little more contrast here to our arm. I think I'm actually working lighter than I normally do, which isn't a problem because I'm happy with how it's turning out. Some pieces need more layers than others and bright sunny days don't need too, too many layers. After all, we're not really trying to convey a dark and, you know, well well developed setting. So, fewer layers is fine. I say that as I go in and add another layer. <laughs> like how I always say I'm not going to do something and I do. Let's, let's say this is the last for that though, huh? I'm 
going to go ahead now and get started on the centers of the flowers. So I'm just grabbing a mix of a couple different yellows just to do the centers first. I'm going to do them like little, little grass asters. So they're going to have purple outsides. And then I'm actually going to grab a little bit of indigo and use that on the bodice just to make it a little bit darker. But this is coming along super cute. Now I want the blush to also be a little darker. So I'm grabbing more of that coral pink, which is kind of a natural fit. Blend it out just a little. It's such a cute color. So for the asters, I want to do purple, but I want to do it with some of the blue we used earlier in the sky. This is actually a very, oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. This is actually a very good sort of middle of the road purple because you can very easily take it to red violet or you can very easily take it to blue violet. And there are some purples I feel like it doesn't really matter what you mix with it, it's still gonna be what it is. Like, like with just a little bit of that blue, I was able to get kind of a dioxine purple, which is a little darker than what I had in mind, but that's okay. Watercolor tends to dry a little lighter than it goes down anyway. Now the bow of her dress, or the bow of her bodice, this part here, I think I want that to be red. So I'm going to start with this lovely opera rose, which is a nice hot pink. And then I'm going to leave some white for highlights. So it's something I've meant to do throughout this piece and didn't quite do as much as I should have. Then I'm going to grab some of this darker red. Oh, those will go nice together. All right, I think I've made enough progress that I can start painting in her hair. Do I have any free wells? I do, I have one. She's trying to not only figure out her hair, but the best way to approach painting it. because I did want there to be bands of green where it got woven, where the flower crown is woven together or appears woven together. So with the green, I definitely do want to use the one lonely Winsor & Newton watercolor marker they sent. That's kind of a an odd choice. I do want to use it though. Um, but I also, I mean, you know, they gave us so many, let's zoom out. They gave us so many colors here. It's a little bit weird that they also were like, hey, have one. I really think they were kind of just cleaning out stock. Trying to decide though how I want to do it. If I want to do this first and then layer on top of it with this or vice versa or kind of work back and forth. Something else that's really nice about these watercolors is that they're probably not going to tear up your sable brushes the way some of the, some of the uh, semi-moist half pans like Windsor & Newton half pans for example do tear up my brushes they my brushes have significant wear and tear from those watercolors whereas these they use a different type of binder it's actually an animal glue binder and 
and I'm working on a large post about different types of Asian watercolors. So if you are interested in learning more, you should definitely check that out because I'm going to write about it in depth there. And I think as I said in the demonstration video, Sadie Saves the Day has some really great information available both on her website and on her YouTube channel about Gansai and Gansai Tambi watercolors. now we can finally start using the Escoda Prado since I'm kind of in the tiny detail department. So the first thing I'm going to use it for is the inside of her mouth. I do like how springy and long this brush is. Um, there's like one stray hair kind of that I'm sort of working around. I'm gonna move this because this already wants to teeter. I'm using a, an old photo frame. The glass had broken and I kept the frame for the chipboard. Not quite what I wanted, but that's okay. And I like lost her eyebrow entirely at the recompute where it would be. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the shamrocks. And what I'm doing here is I'm just applying it directly to my non-absorbent craft mat because I want to kind of get it washed in. I want lighter colors to begin with and then I'm going to do darker, more saturated colors as we kind of develop the shamrocks. Now something to keep in mind with almost any type of watercolor marker is that if you use your marker directly into a wet area, which you guys can't even see what I'm doing, so let me fix the camera. If you use your marker directly into a wet area, you have a good chance of abrading the surface of the paper, pilling it, tearing it up. Even nice papers, this will happen, but it's really prone on inexpensive cellulose papers. So if you're going to directly apply it, either do it when it's very wet and just very gently dip it in to let it diffuse out or wait until it's had a chance to fully dry. And these are, to my knowledge, the only watercolor markers on the market that actually use pigment. So these are pretty similar, at least in terms of like composition and handling to traditional watercolors. The rest are dye-based and are highly water reactive. This feels dry. I wanted to do a diffused sort of thing into it, but. All right, let that dry. All right, I'm going to demonstrate a direct application, which is probably my least favorite way to use these markers. And that is because they don't really move. So the paper is still wet, so I'm still getting a little bit of blending, which is good. These might actually blend out. But you see, it's like a really deliberate marker kind of line, right? It is a brush tip, but there's not a lot of flex to the marker. So I'm going to use some clean water to just try and blend that out a little bit and actually it seems to be working okay which I think is because I was working on damp paper so that could be the the trick to getting it to give you a nice blended out effect in fact it's blending out a little too much in some areas 
because I want to preserve the lighter areas as well. I'll just go ahead, kind of blend that out a little bit so that we still have some of the lighter area in the center. And then I'm applying it directly to the craft mat, I'm just picking up a little bit. And I feel like this application is a more organic application. I know that kind of removes some of the point of them being markers. And it can be great if you are looking for kind of a stronger, more forceful line. So looking at this, I'm not quite satisfied with the number of shamrocks I have. I think I'd like more on the image. So I'm going to use a combination of the green marker and my Gansai Tombi paints to help fill in some of these gaps at the bottom. So as you guys can see, the undiluted green goes down really, really saturated. And it may be a little hard to work with. That's why I like putting it over to the side first. But I thought for the sort of correction I want to do here, this would really be I'm basically just drawing little heart shapes for each of the individual leaves. So, very, very easy. Alright my friends, so we are almost finished. I am going to use the Escoda Prado to just tighten a few things here and there. It's really not a bad synthetic brush. It's good for sort of inking tight details, which you know, it's always nice to have another brush that can kind of serve that need. It's not as stubby as some of the synthetic brushes I've owned. So it definitely has a little more bend and snap to it. I might also try using this brush on the regular. Kind of like it, a little hard to work with. It wouldn't be like my daily driver for inking, but it's certainly not bad for a uh, synthetic brush. It does have a lot of nice snap to it. Although it does not have a particularly large belly. So it is probably a little prone. All right, so 
I am going to just add some final finishing touches with a little bit of Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof. But really, at least for this illustration here, the set was a joy to paint with. Much easier than my prior experiences. So I really think it boils down to the Arches paper is actually really nice with these. It can hold on to the pigment. I don't have a lot of that glossy buildup. I complained about the last time I used it. So if you really want to use Kuratake Gansai Tambi as like your main watercolor, and I have no experience with using them for comic pages, so this is a big caveat. I say go for it, but make sure you use a nicer cotton rag paper, something that can kind of hold on to the paint a little bit better. So we already know that arches will hold on to this for us. So that is a start. I bet Kilimanjaro would hold, honestly, I bet like most cotton rag papers. Now I don't know about um, hot press cotton rag papers. That'll have to be something I explore in the future, although I have recently fallen in love with Legion Aqua Hot Press. I think it's pretty amazing and I've been playing with it a little bit and I'm really enjoying it. So I'd love to test these out on that as well. And maybe someday I'll get to but I'm not going to make any promises since I have so much watercolor testing to do ahead of me, so many paper tests to do. I can't do 100% compatibility, but you know, I liked this combination so much. I would definitely be excited to try that. So what do I think of the summer watercolor snacks. I really enjoyed it for the edigame postcard I did for you guys and you guys can check out that video if you are interested in it. I really enjoyed it for that but I knew I was going to enjoy it for that and I did provide my own edigame paper. This is the first thing I've done where um, I did provide some of my own materials but I tried to stay really faithful to what's in the box as well. Um, I love Arches watercolor paper. Most, I, most watercolorists I know love it unless they've gotten burned by it. Hopefully they're clearing that up. And uh, I have actually found a new love for Kuratake Gansai Tambi watercolors. So that's really cool. Um, it's really nice to actually kind of be forced to re-examine some of my biases that I had and to, you know, re- approach a product. So that's really nice. I've actually found a new appreciation that I would not have had otherwise. So I'm grateful for that. Um, I really like the Escoda Prado brush that they included and the Kuratake Brush 2.0 water brush they included that I didn't use in this. I actually replaced it with another one that I had more handy, but performs very similarly. Water brushes are not my favorite material to use personally. Um, the way I paint is not very conducive to me enjoying water brushes, but the water brush they included was a quality water brush and um, the marker, which has wandered off somewhere, but uh, the watercolor marker they also included is a high quality product, but it's a little weird that they only included one. It really feels like they are trying to clean out their um, their warehouse, clean out their stock. So I would have liked to have either seen more, like, you know, two or maybe three, or something else included in the box instead. So I thought this was a good box. I look forward to watching the Jess Engel tutorials and see what she covers. And I hope you guys were able to learn some things by watching my field tests as well. I believe I promised you guys, let me take a look at my sticky notes where I keep notes. So I promised you guys Western, which is, this is 
kind of my Western. This is how I paint normally. I promised you guys a floral and I promised you a hybrid Japanese style, something like um, what a lot of mangaka do where there's a lot of the white of the page. So I am going to try to do those for you guys. It may take a little bit longer for me to do. I'm gonna do it on the arches paper. I'm going to do it using the Kuratake Genzai Tombi set. So um, keep an eye out for those. But for now, I'm gonna consider myself caught up and I'm gonna allow myself to move on to some of the other projects that are calling my name. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful, helpful, and informative for you guys as well as cute. I hope perhaps it has inspired you to paint along or at least encouraged you to give it a shot. Um, painting is a process and you are absolutely not expected to be good at it out of the gate. It takes years of practice. So I really hope you guys will give it a shot and begin that journey with me. I know I'm so long ways from where I wanna be. So I wanna take that journey together with you guys. I think it would be phenomenal to be able to share that together. And I hope to see you guys again really soon with another watercolor perhaps video. So this is Kara from my watercolor webcomic 7 Inch Kara, which you guys can read for free at 7inchcara.com and 7inchcara.tumblr.com. And I am currently working on completing volume two, so hopefully I will have Kickstarter information available for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys.